Yo, 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 what's poppin'? I am Jacques Slade, and after a bit of a wait, we can finally start getting our hands on Jason Tatum's newest signature shoe from Jordan brand, the Jordan Tatum One. These will be releasing this weekend and will cost you $120, which puts them right along the lower end of the basketball sneakers as far as pricing goes, but that also explains a few things about the shoe as far as its construction goes, and I'll jump into those in just a few minutes. But first, let's just get everyone caught up to speed. See, Tatum originally signed with Jordan Brand back in 2019, and everyone was super excited to see him join the likes of Blake Griffin, Westbrook, and others. Since then, we've seen Jordan sign Zion, Luka, and UCLA b-ball star Kiki Rice, who rocked the 38 during the NCAA tournament. With Tatum, we all expected him to be getting a signature shoe at some point, and I think it's fair to say that a lot of us actually thought Thought it would have happened before now. Either way, we are here and the Jordan Tatum one is here as well. So let's talk about it. So the first thing I think most people are gonna notice about the shoe once they get it in hand is going to be the weight. Considering the size and shape of the shoe, the expectation for me at least was that the shoe was gonna have a little bit more weight to it. However, that is not the case. Jordan has shaved off a few ounces off the shoe in a few areas, and it looks like the primary area was the outsole. Instead of using a full rubber outsole like you see on most basketball shoes, the Tatum one only uses rubber in the forefoot. I'd say right from about the metal tarsal area forward, the rubber on this colorway is translucent and feels like it could give you some great grip on the court and outside as well. I didn't find it to be super soft or super hard from a cursory touch and feel test, which makes me think you shouldn't have any problems with it whichever way you plan to play. Now, a quick note. I have not played in these as of yet. So these are just my first reactions to the shoes. But with rubber only in the forefoot, that leaves the midfoot and rear with only the density and traction you get from the foam. To their credit, the rubber pads at the forefoot are nice and big, and the lack of rubber in the heel isn't something new. It's something we've seen in various shoes from various sports, and when done right, you really don't even notice it. However, I did give it a quick on-foot feel test here in the studio, and the rear does not grip as well as the forefoot on the wood floors here in the studio. Now, while most players don't actually play on their heels, or at least they shouldn't be, you do utilize that section for certain moves, and that heel can help with start and stop moves, as well as just stopping period. Again, I haven't actually played in these and the added compression of dynamic movement may introduce another element in the foam that may help it grip the surface better or maybe it needs to be broken in and that helps, but as of now, it definitely gives me a little bit of pause. Now packed inside the foam is where the magic really happens with this shoe. I am a big fan of zoom and you have a pretty sizable zoom pad here and the forefoot of the shoe that you can actually see from below and from the side of the shoe. The foam midsole and heel outsole acts as a carrier for the zoom bag and from the looks of it, the zoom air sits right below the insole and that is part of the reason that it feels so nice on your foot. You can also see that they have a plate that sits just below the zoom bag. With the lightweight foam that they use, like the one on this model, this plate is going to be even more important than it would in a normal basketball shoe. This is going to help stabilize the shoe through those dynamic movements that just come naturally to the game of basketball. You also get some additional stability through the lateral forefoot and toe with what looks like the same material used on the plate. I'd have to actually take them completely apart to see all the details, but I think that that plate actually extends from the bottom and extends into the open area on the lateral side. With so much open area in the midsole and the outsole area, I think the designers wanted to reinforce this area since when you are cutting, you add a lot of pressure to your foot on that side. If you look at shoes like, say the Air Jordan 11, it's why Ticker used patent leather on the Rand to help contain Jordan's foot on top of the footbed, and this plastic or TPU piece would serve that same purpose. Now, the interesting thing is that they made it in red, which blends with the other highlights on the shoe on the medial side, but they are made from a softer material that feels like some sort of variant of patent leather. And moving on to the upper, we have a lot of great detail here to help make this shoe come together. The primary materials on the upper is a lightweight linen weave that looks really breathable and should keep your feet nice and cool after a long session. Just peeking through the side panels, you can literally see right through the material to the outside. So since it extends all the way down to the toe, you can see why they added a bit of reinforcement along the midfoot section where the material transitions to the heel. 
And speaking of the heel, the design they use back here looks absolutely fantastic. I've only seen this in the Archer Ave colorway and those don't have the same design. So maybe this is where the story of the zoo colorway comes into play. According to Nike, the zoo is the favorite place that Tatum likes to take his son. And the Welcome to the Zoo Air Jordan 34 was the first PE that he ever played in from Jordan brand. So that's kind of how the story ties in to this silhouette. You should also be able to see giraffe, zebra, and big cat prints on the heel piece as well. Of course, you get signature details as well. It wouldn't be a signature shoe without him. The number zero on the heel, along with his actual signature, the gold jump man on the lateral side. On the medial side, you get some GPS coordinates that lead you to City Hall in St. Louis. Jason was born in St. Louis. One part that really stands out to me is the JT logo on the tongue. It takes that similar animal print style and adds a bit more texture to the equation, which is cool. Another area where they have some texture is on the overlays on the upper. The actual design reminds me a little bit of the Air Jordan 11 logo i.e. but the texture looks more like a leopard print overall the shoe has a very sports car like feel to it i could say you know the higher ankle cut that trends downward towards the toe and then this little tpu and shiny synthetic leather at the toe it kind of reminds me of like the nose of an f1 car so i would say look for 120 dollars, i imagine the audience for this shoe is a younger demo that loves Tatum's style of play and isn't looking for the most technically sound basketball shoe. Size wise, they seem to fit pretty true to size. Again, these are available now for 120 bucks. Now, these are just my first impressions of the Tatum one from Jordan Brand. I would love to know what you all think of the shoe and if you'll be grabbing a pair. As for a full review, make sure you follow me over on Snapchat, IG, or TikTok because that's where I'll be dropping the details once I get these on the court. All right, yeah, those are my thoughts. I'll see you guys soon. Peace.